Good morning, and welcome to Ephesus Ministries, where our senior pastor is Jeff E. Carter Jr., and our assistant pastor is Shannon L. Carter. I am your announcer, Anita Dooley. We really appreciate you worshiping with us today. For all of you who are watching on live stream, please share and put your name and location so that we can pray for you and your family. There are four ways to give to our ministry. You can download the Tithely app to your cell phone or from your cell phone via text. Use the phone number 1-833-527-6311 and write the word give in the message. You will receive a text to set up your account. For PayPal, go to paypal.me forward slash Ephesus Ministries NY and be sure to capitalize the E in Ephesus, the M in Ministries and the NY. If you would like to mail your offering, our church address is Ephesus Ministry, 80 Durham Avenue, Buffalo, New York, 14215. And finally, you can cash app us at dollar sign Ephesus Ministries 80. Please join us every night at 630 for prayer. Or if you would like to participate in our Bible study every Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock p.m., or our youth Bible study on Thursday evenings at 7.30 p.m., email us at ephesusinfo at gmail.com. You can also access giving and contact information on our website, www.ephesusministry.com or .org. If you are blessed by this ministry, please take the time to share and follow our Facebook page, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell so that you know every time we are going live. At this time, we will have our prayer from Minister Leroy Pete and our scripture from Sister Jamila Pete. Immediately following our scripture, we will hear once again from our music ministry. And then the next voice that you will hear will be of our assistant pastor, Shannon L. Carter. God bless and please enjoy the service. Good morning, everyone, from Facebook to Zoom. Today is a blessed day that God brought us all here to, together. So if you don't mind, can you close your eyes, bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for bringing us here today. Father, that you woke us up on this day, Father, because this is a new day in our beginning, of the beginning of our new week. So, Father, touch everyone that decided to come here because it's no accident that you are here today because you are here because Father wanted you here. So Heavenly Father, bless our pastors, bless Ephesus, bless everyone that's on Zoom, everyone on Facebook. Father, touch everyone and prepare our hearts, prepare our spirits so we get ready for the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our scripture today will be coming from Romans um, 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measures of faith. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, I did look cute, uh, but thank you to Brother Walter. Uh, I have entered in and I have been sitting here in worship and I hope and pray that you have as well. Um, thank you so much, Brother Walter, for that medley of worship songs. And if you were paying attention and if you just sung along uh, like me, I sang to myself and those words were in my heart. And by the time we got to I Surrender All, I was in complete and full surrender with my hands lifted. So now I've been crying and my eyes don't look as cute as they did when I logged on, but that's okay because the word of God is still the word. I do honor God. We want to thank you, those of you that are here with us on Zoom, those that have taken the time to log into Facebook. If you are watching us Facebook Live, we'd like to welcome you and thank you so much for joining us. We don't take it for granted that you have come to worship and be with us on today. Even if you are watching this on the replay, we thank you for taking the time even to watch us then. We would love it and appreciate it if you would uh, share this video and maybe tag someone even that you believe would be blessed from this word. I am the assistant pastor of Ephesus Ministries, Pastor Shannon L. Carter. I am here representing our senior pastor, um, who is also my dad, Pastor Jeff E. Carter Jr. And once again, we want to welcome you and we thank you for being here with us. I'm going immediately into the word. This is Women's History Month. And the funny thing is, I wasn't even cognizant of that fact at 4.30 in the morning when God and I were talking about this message and when he gave me this message. And then when I got up and got ready to start taking my notes, I said, oh, this is perfect timing because this is Women's History Month. And so I'm super excited about the word that God has given us for today. Um, very quickly before I go into the word, just some very quick announcements. Our women will be meeting on this afternoon just for a women's fellowship. We will be meeting virtually. You are more than welcome to join us. You don't have to be a member of Ephesus. If you would like more information on that, you can go directly to our website, www.ephesusministries.com. Go to the upcoming events uh, page and you'll be able to see that information there. Also, you can email us directly at www.ephesusinfo at gmail.com and we will send you the Zoom link and we would love to have you come and fellowship with us. Um, we do have some other things coming up, but I believe that our pastor is going to speak to those later. So I'm going to go ahead into the word. Um, if you go with me to a scripture that we hear quoted very often in the book of Jeremiah, we're going to the prophet Jeremiah. And this is, um, I'm looking at my face, even in the camera, and I can see where I, I was just crying in worship, and I entered the throne room. And it is funny because Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. And we're going to talk more about that as we get into the message. But I laughed often. Um, our One of our former youth pastors, uh, Pastor Tony Benjamin, who is a dear friend and sister of mine years ago, back when we were roommates, um, she used to always call me Maya. Her nickname for me was Maya because when I am in worship, when I am in prayer, when I really enter the presence of God, I just cry. And so she began to call me Maya because she said, every time I see you in the presence of God, there are tears that come with that. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in the message on today. So we're going into Jeremiah, the ninth chapter. We're going to be reading verses 16 through 21. Normally, I do the King James Version and another version, but today we're just going to stick with the King James Version. Jeremiah 9, beginning at verse 16, says, I will scatter them also among the heathen, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider ye and call for the mourning women that they may come and send for cunning women that they may come and let them make haste and take up a wailing for us that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with waters. 
for a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land, because our dwellings have cast us out. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth and teach your daughters wailing and every one her neighbor lamentation. For death is come up into our windows and is entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. And our message today, if we chose a title or a topic for our message, our message today is entitled, The Cry of a Praying Woman. The Cry of a Praying Woman. And we've heard this scripture so often, um, and we've heard it, uh, heard people say when they say call for the morning women, and they sometimes um, reinterpret it to say call for the praying women. But I want to talk a little bit, first of all, about the context of this scripture. And so Jeremiah was a prophet that in the ninth chapter of Jeremiah, what we see is Jeremiah prophesying on Judah because of their misbehavior. And he was prophesying judgment to Judah because of their misbehavior. And so in the times relative to our scripture, they had what was called professional mourners or lamenters. And what Jeremiah was saying was because of the judgment of the land, because of the state that our land has found itself in, it is time to call in the mourners. And they had women that would come and they would lament, but very loudly, and they would mourn and they would scream and they would cry and they would wail. And it was that wailing that even if there was the death of a person, it was that mourning and that wailing that first of all drew attention and we're gonna talk about that, but drew attention to let the people around know that there had been death, that there was hurt going on, that there was pain, that there was sorrow. And so Jeremiah said, because of the current state of Judah, call for the mourning women, call for the lamentors, because it is time for us to go into mourning. So Shannon, why in the world would you take that scripture and now put it to the context of the cry of a praying woman? Well, let me tell you why. Because if there are any women that are on this line that are watching, if there are women of God, if I am putting out a battle cry for holy women of God that are spending time in prayer, holy women of God that are spending time in the presence of the king and women, I am saying for us, it is time for us to begin to cry out because of the judgment that has fallen upon our land. Women, we have become silent. We have become quiet. Um, in Sunday school this morning, our Sunday school teacher, Elder Dooley, did a fantastic job in talking from the book of Romans. And one of the things that they talked about was compromise. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I want to put out a challenge to you women of God. It is time for us to no longer be the part of the society that is now a part of that death, but it is time for us to take the front lines in mourning and in wailing and in crying and saying, God help us all. So the amazing thing was I was doing some uh, biblical research and what I initially thought that I was going to do is I went and I said, well, God, show me some examples of what you're talking about. And so I went into the second chapter, uh, second book of Samuel, the 21st chapter, and I began to read about Rizpah. And I began to read about how Rizpah sat and she, it takes my mother, I wish my mother was still here because she was one of the first women that I ever heard preach a message on 
on Rispa and the, the, what she did and the sacrifice that she made in her morning. But God said, nope, that's not where I want you to go. But we've put it in the chat. Take some time and read it for yourself. Second Samuel in 21, it'll tell you about Rispa. Then I thought, okay, so we're talking about praying women. So I'm going to go back to Hannah. And so I went to the book of first Samuel and I began to read in the second chapter and I began to read about Hannah. And so I said, okay, God, maybe you want me to use Hannah as an example of the cry of a praying woman. And God said, nope, Shannon, now that you've gotten that in your spirit, that's not where I want you to go either. What I want you to do is recognize that there are women right amongst you. There are modern day women. There are women that within your lifetime have given you a modern day example of the cry of a praying woman. This message began to really birth in my spirit on yesterday. I was sharing with my dad, um, if the Jones family, if anybody sees this, know that we are still praying with you all, but a family that is dear and near to my heart, very close to me. Mother Prinsola Jones was a part of not only my foundation as a child, but early in my twenties, I spent weekends going to Syracuse. And so I spent a lot of time in her church. I spent a lot of time when I moved out of town and I lived out of state, there were times that nobody knew I was calling Mother Prinsola Jones on the phone regularly and she poured into me. And the last time I saw her, she put her arms around me and went into prayer and began to pray for me. And I said, God, I wanna thank you that I have had women praying women in my life that cried out for me, that cried out on my behalf. Yes, I can talk about my own grandmothers and you all have heard me talk about it. You've heard my dad talk about it. Many of you have known my grandmothers. They were praying women. They were examples to me of what a praying woman looked like, what a praying woman lived like. The more I began to think about my own personal life, I thought about Mother Early Turner. I thought about the times that we spent times, the, the time that she took giving up her own time on Saturdays, driving me up and down the road, myself and other young people in the church, taking us to state purity conventions where we had to get up and present. And if we, whether we wanted to or not, we were told you can and you will. And because Mother Early Turner was a praying woman that put into me, you can and you will, I look back all these years later and now I am who I am. I look back on the praying women of my life. My own godmother, Mother Callie Pringle, spent time in prayer and time before the Lord. And so it was the, the destiny of God that had my parents discuss with her that she would become my godmother because I will, I will I say it all the time and I still believe that there was literally a, a spiritual transference. And so there's a part of Mother Callie Pringle that will always be a part of the spirit of the woman of who I am. So I said, God, I want to thank you. But then I said, God, I cannot be selfish. Yes, you have given me praying women in my life to show me what it looks like, to show me what it's supposed to be like. But then I began to think about my church family. Ephesus, I am so grateful to God that we stand on a foundation of praying women. God knows I love my pastor. Y'all know I do. We love our pastor. But let's just be honest. Ephesus would not be what it is had it not been for Mother Mary Reed and Mother Zadie Callahan. They gave a foundation. Mother Cox gave a foundation of prayer. And so now when we look back, we cannot forget the cries of Mother Mary Reed. We cannot forget the standard that she set for our women. I still hear Mother Reed in my head. There were things that Mother Reed would stand and say, I just need to say this to the young women. I remember the time that Mother Inez Milhouse was just in town visiting. And when Aunt Janet picked her up and brought her to the church, I'll never forget it. And our pastor said, Mother Milhouse, the Lord just told me you're supposed to bring the word today. And because she was frail and weak in her body, it wasn't about being in the pulpit. It wasn't about catching a tune. They sat her in a chair in the front of the church on a Sunday morning. And Mother Milhouse said things on that day that I still put in effect in my life. Ephesus, we have been exposed to praying women. 
I saved, in my opinion, the best for last. My own mother, Pastor Debbie, many of you remember and were there. Some were not there, even as far back as when we were still at Prince of Peace. My mother said, God is calling us to prayer. And it was under the leadership of, at that time, First Lady Deborah Carter, and then it transferred and came over into Ephesus. But even at Prince of Peace, the first Friday of every night, we were in all night prayer. Why? She couldn't do, she couldn't teach what she didn't live. So what I can say personally, as somebody that lived with her, I can remember times when I would wake up in the morning to get ready for school. And my mother was just coming back upstairs because she would get out of the bed and she knew if I lay here, I'm going back to sleep. And she got up physically out of the bed, got her Bible and would come downstairs and we would find her in the living room, in the dark. She didn't even turn on the lights, but in the dark, in the living room, she would go before God in prayer, praying for her family, praying for her church, praying for her children, praying for her grandchildren. And I'm so grateful to God that now I am the result of the cry of a praying woman. Well, I said, okay, God, I want to thank you, but you told me that you would give me modern day. Now, let me just say to Ephesus women, if I don't say your name in this moment, please understand I love and appreciate each and every one of you. But there were some specific examples that God gave me as I was going through this message. And I began to think about some uh, people like Elder Julie and Elder Blue, who spent years getting up in the morning, spending time in prayer. And I believe it was Elder Julie that I heard give the example. And she said, sometimes I anoint my hands with oil before I go to work because I know that there are gonna be children there that need a hug. I thank God that he placed praying women in the school system that could go on their jobs and lay their hands on those children. And those kids didn't even know that they had anointed hands being laid on them. Why? Because they were crying the cry of a praying woman. I thank God and I thought about somebody like Mother Ham, who is not only a praying woman herself, but who takes time every single night to ensure that there are other praying women that have access to the prayer line. Those other two praying women, I thought about Mother Rhines and Mother Guilford. <coughs> Excuse me. Back when I was in college, I had just gone back to college. It was, a, it was an extreme task for me. I was working full time. I was in school. I was trying to support my church. And I'll never forget, we were in prayer every single night. And I would bring my textbooks to prayer. There, there was no, for me, I'm back in school, so I can't go to church or I can't go to prayer. No, Shannon brought her textbooks to prayer. And I would get on my knees and I would open my textbook and pull out my highlighter. And I focused on reading while I was still in the atmosphere of those praying around me. And I'll never forget Mother Guilford and Mother Rhines coming up behind me and laying their hands on me. And I'll never forget Mother Guilford saying, to me, baby, you keep coming to prayer. You keep bringing those books to prayer and God is going to bring you through those classes. But I don't know what I would have done had I not had the support of the cry of praying women behind me. I think about uh, women like Sister Della and Sister Latasha who have taken the, the, what do they call it, the bulls of entrepreneurship by the horns and said, prayerfully, God, I'm going to pursue this so that I can show other women what you are powerful and what you are capable of doing. And they have taken the world of business and they have said, not by might, nor by power, but it is by the spirit of the Lord that I lead this charge through what? Prayer, because even in the business world, we can now hear the cry of a praying woman. I thought about women like Mother Marsh and Elder Joanne Rogers who spend time in prayer. And so they're not out in the public. They're not out trying to be behind a pulpit, but every now and then God will drop somebody in their spirit and you just get that card in the mail that says the exact right thing at the exact right time. I went back when I talked about our foundation of prayer. There was one person that I left out and I cannot, I dare not leave them out. Because if you have ever, those of you that are members of Ephesus and those of you that are not, if you have ever received a hug from Mother Emily Boatwright, there was no question about it that she was a woman 
of prayer. I thought about women like Dr. Renee Edgerton and Judge T, Judge Troutman Turner, but I call her Judge T affectionately. But I thought about women like them who have said, not only am I going to pursue advancement in my educational goals, but I'm going to remain a woman who is so, uh, rooted and grounded in the foundations of prayer. And then not only do they just take that for themselves, but they bring it back to our young people and they teach our young people how to be a woman of success while yet remaining a woman of prayer. They teach our young people by their lives that you don't have to give up a standard of holiness to be able to succeed in what you want to do. I thought about women like Sister Nicole Hargrave, uh, Hargrove and Mother Ruiz, who every single night, uh, Elder Gretchen Harris, every single night, no matter what their bodies are going through, sometimes their bodies are wracked with pain, but every single night they are showing up and they are calling in and they are saying, God, I give you glory. God, I give you praise. They're logging into church saying, my body is not feeling well. But when we experience them, we don't just experience their hurt and pain. We experience what? We experience the cry of a praying woman. I thought about it last but not least. I said, God, I want to thank you because you heard me talk earlier about Mother Turner and me being a part of purity and what it was in my life as a young person. And I said, God, I want to thank you because there's that old saying that says it takes a village to raise a child. I'm so grateful to have women of prayer as a part of my village. And so every Sunday morning at 1030, every Thursday night at 730, there are women of prayer and Pastor Renee and Sister Dawn and Sister Gabby engulf our young people and they teach them how to be women of prayer, how to be women of holiness. I'm going back to our scripture reference in Jeremiah, the ninth chapter, where we heard um, I want to put it back. Verse 20, it says, yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Why? And teach your daughters wailing and everyone, her neighbor, lamentation, women of God, women of prayer, if we are not teaching the generation to come how to be women of prayer, we are failing in our assignments. God is calling us to higher. God is calling us to greater. Women of Ephesus, I appreciate the fact that I can stand with you in ministry. And yes, I appreciate what God is doing with us. And as I stated earlier, if I did not call your name, that does not mean that you don't fit in this group of the women of prayer, but God is calling us higher. There is a dying generation. There is, a, I, I'm struggling because I am personally wailing and lamenting because I feel like women of prayer and women of substance, if we are not careful and if we don't take the time to do what God has called us to do, we are going to become extinct. Our young women are struggling. Our young women are walking in the dark. Hmm, yes, God. See, I told you, I'm trying not to cry, but there are young women. They are walking in the dark and they are lost because they were not as fortunate as many of us to say I had a mother who was a woman of prayer. They don't have the testimony to say I had a grandmother who was a praying woman. And for many of you watching me now, there are young women, there are nieces, there are goddaughters, there are sisters, there are coworkers, there are students, there are neighbors, there are women in your life. And God says, you may be the only woman of prayer that they see. And I am calling you to cry out, hallelujah. I am calling you to lament. I am calling you to be a woman of prayer and to cry out for the generations to come. I called my dad and I was crying some time ago because it broke my heart and I had to put myself in check. 
And this message comes to me first because I got a, a message from a young lady, <coughs> excuse me, and she came to me with a problem and she reached out to me and it was something that I felt was bigger than me. And I called my dad in tears and I said, daddy, I'm heartbroken. I said, and I'm grieving because when this young woman called me, her mom was a woman of God, but is deceased. And I said to my dad, she can't go to her mom. I can't send her to my mom. I can't send her to Grammy. And I said to my dad, I don't even know where to send her. And he said to me, Shannon, if you are a woman of prayer, and if you are a woman that knows and that stands on the word of God, you shouldn't have to send her anywhere. My dad has been telling me for some time and I did not want to hear it. And he has been saying, Shannon, you have been so dependent on what you consider to be the mothers of the church. And you are reaching an age and a stage and a generation where I don't care how you don't think you want to sound or feel old, you are becoming the generation of the mothers of the church. We think of that term mothers in Zion and we think of old ladies and there are many of us who are reaching middle age and you feel like you're struggling in that balance because I'm still trying to be young and hip. I'm not ready to be old and God says it's got nothing to do with age. I am calling you to a standard of holiness that can reach your hand out and grab a young woman and grab a daughter and grab somebody else's daughter and bring them and say, you can and you will be a woman of destiny, be a woman of greatness, be a woman of power, and a woman of might. And so, as I said, I'm putting myself on the carpet first because I had to repent. There was a time, especially, and when my girls were younger, I was not as busy. I didn't have as much going on. And I'm putting me on the altar first and I'm being transparent because I'm praying that what I say is gonna help somebody else. But there was a time that there was never a night that my girls went to bed and I didn't just say, say your prayers. Everybody, both of them, they came in my bedroom and everybody got on our knees together at my bed and we went into prayer. And I was excited at teaching my children how to become women of prayer. And I am the first to admit life came, I got busy, I got a new career, I got a new position in the church, and then I got to do this, and then I got to do that, and then don't forget the housework, and then I got to do that. And sometimes things began to happen, and by the end of the night, I was exhausted. And before I knew it, now I'm in the bed, and I'm telling the girls, don't forget to go to bed at such and such and so, so time, and make sure you say your prayers before you go to bed. And God said, no, ma'am, it's not good enough. When I said train up a child, I meant it. And I had to take this message myself and say every night. And if it is, it, it, if I have anything to do with it and they watching and they can see it, as long as they live in my house, God has called me to say, Shannon, you've got to go back to the days of your grandmother. You've got to go back to the days of every night. We close this day together in prayer. And you may not choose to do it at night. You may say it's better in the morning. So every morning, I'm going to call my family into prayer and we're going to spend time together in prayer. You may say in the middle of the day, you may say I can't do it every day, but once a week, but there should be some time. And yes, this message for today is for our women, but even to the men that are the heads of this house, uh, heads of households. My challenge to you is there should be some time that you call your family together and say, we are going into prayer. And so I want to, we're gonna take just uh, 30 seconds, a minute, uh, many people do it for a minute and that's too long for me. So we're gonna take 30 seconds and I want you to think back 
It may not be a family member. It may not be a mother or a grandmother. But if you are watching, I want you to think back. Who was that woman? Who was that man? Who was that person that held a standard and that prayed for you? There's the old song that says, somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. Who was it that took the time to pray for you? And we're gonna take 30 seconds and just take a moment of silent remembrance. And I want you to remember the effect that that person had on your life. And then what we're going to do now, as you sit in the emotion and the feeling of remembering the power that that person had in your life, I want us to commit to say, God, as of right now, as of this moment, it doesn't matter what I did before, it doesn't matter what was going on before, but as of this moment, I am committing. And let me speak to those of you, there may be someone on Facebook and you don't know what we're talking about. You don't know what a life of prayer is because you have not been exposed. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ is available to you. And it at this very second, at this very moment, you can make the commitment to accept him into your life. And to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. And the moment, I mean the very second, that you pray the prayer of salvation. And we will pray that with you now. But the second that you pray that prayer of salvation, not only are the angels rejoicing, but you have the ability, <coughs> excuse me, to join the rest of us to committing to a life of prayer, a life of fellowship with God, your creator. And so first and foremost, Father, if there is anyone on this line that is watching, that makes the decision to accept you as their Lord and Savior, I thank you even now. And God, as they make the choice to believe that you sent your only begotten son and that Jesus Christ, the only begotten son of God, came to this earth and gave his life at Calvary's cross and then rose again for us to have the victory. As they make the choice, God, to commit their lives to you, we thank you now for accepting them into your kingdom. We thank you, God, for continuing to teach them more about you. Lead them, God, to a church that would teach them more about who you are and who you desire to be in their lives. And we give you praise in Jesus name. And now for those of you that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, I can remember uh, waking up mornings and you all know I said, uh, my dad has talked about it. Oftentimes when we would go to Louisiana to visit, it did not matter whether we were there visiting or whether they were still, whoever was still living there. Every, not only did we close out the night in prayer, but it was nothing for us to wake up. And yes, you heard the pots, you smelt breakfast cooking. But in addition to hearing those pots, it was nothing like hearing the sound of my grandmother in the kitchen, starting the day by saying, God, I just want to thank you for another day. Uh, he, I feel it now. God, I just want to give you glory. God, I just want to magnify you. God, I thank you for being my keeper. God, I thank you for being a way maker. God, I thank you for opening doors. God, I thank you for saving my children. I done gone into prayer. God, I thank you for saving my grandchildren. God, I thank you for keeping a fence all around us. I thank you, God, that we're covered in the blood and we're covered in the blood of Jesus. God, I thank you as we go along the day. God, you're going to keep us and you're going to be with us. God, I thank you for being my healer. God, I thank you for being my way maker. God, I thank 
Thank you for being my provider. Thank you now in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. God, we commit ourselves to you now. We commit to do all that you have called us to do. There's none like you in all the earth. Hallelujah. There's none like you. We thank you, God, because your word says that those whom you love, you chasten. And so we thank you for loving us enough to give us a chance to get it right. You are not just the God of a second chance, but you are the God of another chance and another and another and another. And so, God, we take this chance this moment and we will not frustrate your mercy nor your grace but we take the chance that you give us and we thank you now for giving us the ability through your grace to be all that you have called us to be. We thank you that you hear our cries and we give you praise in Jesus name, amen. Thank you so very much for joining us. Once again, this is the assistant pastor, Pastor Shannon L. Carter. I am here representing our pastor, Pastor Jeff E. Carter Jr. Please be uh, feel free to join us. We will be back on this Wednesday night at 6.30 in prayer and then Bible study immediately beginning at seven o'clock. If you would like to join us for Sunday school or for prayer, or you would like to join us right here in Zoom, even for our Bible study. Once again, you can go to our website, www.ephesusministries.com, or you can email us at ephesusinfo at gmail.com. We love you so very much. We are praying for you continually, and we will see you again on Wednesday. Thank you for joining Ephesus Ministries, where we love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.